So if you've ever had a sleepless night, even for the best of reasons, you know how rotten you feel the next day. Does that mean you never pull another all-nighter? Don't answer that until you hear what not sleeping does to your body and your brain. When experts talk about sleep deprivation, they break it into five official stages. In the first stage, a person would have to be awake for 24 hours straight. That doesn't sound catastrophically awful, but it's hardly ideal. Besides being exhausted and on edge, you may make mistakes throughout your day as your attention span and general cognition are actually pretty seriously impacted by those missing eight hours or so of sleep. I was distracted. By what? What distracted you? If you've been up for 24 hours, try not to get behind the wheel if you can help it. The Centers for Disease Control estimates that 24 hours without sleep produces a cognitive impairment equivalent to a 0.1% blood alcohol level. The standard legal benchmark for intoxication is 0.08%, which means after 24 sleepless hours, you might pass a breathalyzer, but you're effectively legally drunk. And that's just sleep deprivation stage one. Oh yeah, it gets worse. With insomnia, nothing's real. Everything's far away. Everything's a copy of a copy of a copy. After just 24 hours without sleep, you can begin to hallucinate. These hallucinations may at first take the form of relatively mild changes in perception, almost kind of fun. But the longer you stay awake, the worse they get, becoming vivid visions and perhaps even outright psychosis. Frontiers in Psychology published a study in which subjects stayed awake for a variety of periods, from 24 hours to a staggering 11 days. All of the subjects experienced some form of visual distortion or hallucination. Those disordered patterns often progressed into psychosis after 72 hours without sleep. And in 1959, radio DJ Peter Tripp decided to stay up and on the air for eight straight days in what he called something that has a different meaning today, a wokeathon. He risked it all to benefit the March of Dimes. Noble for sure, but also not exactly safe. For most of that time, he sat in a glass booth in Times Square, which meant the world had a good view and he developed dramatic paranoid hallucinations. What causes this? Many studies suggest the neurotransmitter dopamine is at play. Dopamine regulates many functions in your body, including memory, mood, and motivation. When it comes to sleep, dopamine appears to be involved in the rapid eye movement, or as you know it better, REM stage. That's when you're most likely to dream and process the events of the day. Staying up for too long may knock dopamine levels out of whack, and scientists have found that too much dopamine in parts of the brain is connected to apparent auditory hallucinations, at least in animal studies. Willpower can do a lot, but when it comes to keeping yourself awake, your body is going to fight back in order to get some much needed sleep. Remember back in college, sitting hunched over your laptop or typewriter, trying to bang out that term paper, starting to bob your head and then falling asleep in your chair? That's the body winning. Generally speaking, after about 36 sleepless hours, you'll feel a crazy intense urge to snooze as the body's sleep pressure builds. The pressure continues to mount until many people conk out involuntarily. They might not even know they've fallen asleep, and that can be scary. Ever heard of microsleeps? That's when people experience extremely short episodes of unconsciousness, just a few seconds at a time. Somebody watching might not be able to tell they've nodded off, but their brain has very briefly shut down. It's literally sleeping with one eye open, or two, actually. Metaphorically and literally, nobody's at the wheel. That's bad enough if you're sitting at home on the couch, but for people working long shifts, like nurses, soldiers, truck drivers, for example, it can be disastrous. When you have insomnia, you're never really asleep, and you're never really awake. Military studies have found that fragmented episodes of sleep, presumably including microsleeps, have led to friendly fire incidents. And to make it even worse, microsleeps do next to nothing to restore waning cognition or energy. If you've ever stayed up all night, you already know that your brain feels like it's working at half speed the next day. This Lego is apparently for ages 6 to 12. I've kind of gotten lost in the instructions. That was from an experiment, like the graphic said there, of staying awake for 50 straight hours. If you can't build Legos, you know it's not good for you, right? Extended sleep deprivation can lead to more than having to reread instructions or taking a wrong turn. A 2003 study published in the journal Sleep tracked 48 adults, split into three groups, with sleep restricted to eight, six, or four hours per night over 14 days. Participants in the four-hour group experienced significant lapses in alertness, working memory, and overall cognition. And subjects who had six or fewer hours of sleep experienced the sort of cognitive problems seen in people who stayed totally awake for up to two nights. In other words, six hours of sleep didn't do the trick. When we say cognitive issues, what exactly are the experts talking about? 
A 2025 review published in Military Medicine found that most of the studies tested subjects on their reaction times and the accuracy of their responses, with some focusing on short-term working memory. Other factors included the ability to switch between tasks efficiently, motivation, and emotional state. All were affected to some degree, though some factors, like attention and reaction time, were a bit better if the subject had gotten extended sleep beforehand, though only for the short term. Multiple studies have found that sleep deprivation is likely to increase risky behavior. Basically, your good judgment filter goes down. This is especially worrisome for parents of already risk-prone teenagers who are also, perhaps not coincidentally, regularly sleep-deprived. On the other hand, if you're in the casino business, this can be a windfall. A 2011 study published in the Journal of Neuroscience showed that sleep-deprived subjects were more likely to make risky bets in hypothetical gambling situations. That's why casinos don't have windows. You have no idea what time it is or how long you've been awake and suddenly you're going all in. All in black. What happens next can also be devastating. Remember the DJ in the glass box in Times Square? He eventually went home and got some sleep, but soon after he had legal trouble, lost his job, and eventually got out of the radio business. Were the two things related? Possibly. Then again, Tripp may have just had issues. Plenty of people who sleep well still get divorced and fired, after all. Now, your body needs you to sleep. And I mean, your whole body. Research has consistently shown that even short-term sleep deprivation can cause problems with your cardiovascular, immune, and nervous systems. What's more, sleep deprivation can wreak havoc on your metabolism. It's been linked to increased risk of obesity and type 2 diabetes. You know how when you're really tired you want carbs? Couple that with a sleep deprivation-induced lack of willpower and it's a very slippery slope. That's not even the whole picture. More intense episodes of sleep deprivation may actually suppress appetite. As a high school student in 1959, Randy Gardner set out to break Peter Tripp's eight-day record and did so, logging 11 days without sleep. He told NPR, I was really nauseous, and this went on for just about the entire rest of the experiment. Rob McDonald, who went over 18 days without sleep in 1986, told UPI reporters near the end of his attempt, I'm ready to collapse because I've had a hard time keeping any food down. Pretty much all of your organs can be harmed by extended sleep deprivation. A study published in JAMA Internal Medicine linked lack of sleep to coronary disease in female subjects and a paper in Curious more broadly linked sleep deprivation and heart disease in a massive study involving more than 28 million participants. A study in Diabetes, Metabolic Syndrome, and Obesity found a link between poor sleep and metabolic syndrome, which can include problems like elevated blood sugar and high blood pressure. Too little sleep has also been associated with kidney disease, according to Kidney International. A lack of sleep can certainly harsh your mood, but extended sleep deprivation is linked to mood disorders like anxiety and depression. In some cases, it's hard to tease out which came first, as those conditions can also cause sleeplessness, but there are clear links between long-standing insomnia and a variety of serious mood disorders. Sleep-deprived people also are more likely to experience anger, according to a review published in Curious. You want a piece of this, Pops? Come and get it! Anecdotally, people who have attempted records for staying up have reported increased episodes of irritability or even rage as the waking hours racked up. Remembering his 11 sleepless days, Randy Gardner recounted, The longer I stayed awake, the more irritable I got. I was a brat. At Guantanamo Bay, where sleeplessness was used as a form of enhanced interrogation, known in many countries as torture, detainees who were forced to stay awake reported significant mood upsets, including anxiety, depression, hallucination, and dissociation. Out of the nine detainees who were studied, four thought about ending their lives, and two attempted to do so. Now, you might think that sleep deprivation can be reversed just by getting a good night's sleep, but the cumulative effects of going without it for an extended period of time aren't so easily fixed. Correcting a sleep deficit isn't a simple one-to-one -one equation where one hour of sleep lost is made up for by an extra one snoozing. A 2021 plus one study found that 13 healthy participants in their 20s, all of whom experienced 30% sleep deprivation over 10 nights, needed over a week of unrestricted sleep to recover. In fact, they hadn't really recovered by the time the study was over. Four nights in a row and I still can't sleep. Please, I haven't had a decent night's sleep since I was 70. <laughs> Admittedly, 13 people is a pretty small sample size, but it shores up an emerging body of research that indicates that even seemingly minor sleep deprivation can have serious and lingering effects. 
A study published in Scientific Reports noted that just one night of complete sleep deprivation seriously impaired the memories of 39 participants and had a noticeable impact on activity in their hippocampus, the part of your brain in charge of memory and learning. Two nights of recovery sleep helped, but subjects still lagged noticeably on memory recall tasks. We call this <laughs> Sicilian Somonics. Presumably, those dealing with even longer-term sleep deprivation have a serious amount of catch-up to do. The best bet of all, according to sleep scientists and anyone with common sense, is to practice good sleep hygiene and get good rest in the first place. Now, could a lack of sleep actually kill you? It's possible. Though research is still emerging, none of what's been published looks good for the life expectancy of the sleep-deprived. Sleep deprivation has been linked to serious auto accidents and workplace injuries, especially when overnight or shift work messes with someone's sleep cycle. Chronic sleep deprivation is also linked to a grim lineup of life-ending problems, including high blood pressure, diabetes, stroke, and increased cancer risk, among others. Quality of sleep is also important, as a 2025 study in scientific reports involving more than 9,600 people over 15 years has demonstrated. Animal-based research has also indicated that long-term sleep deprivation really can be deadly. Research published in a 2020 issue of Cell found that fruit flies and mice subjected to long-term sleep deprivation had elevated levels of reactive oxygen species, or ROS, in their bodies, especially in the digestive system. At high levels, ROS can oxidize and damage key cell components, including DNA, and enough ROS and oxidation can actually kill a cell. Interestingly, when researchers attempted to clear ROS from the guts of fruit flies, they appeared to live out their full lifespan even without any sleep. Of course, humans are not fruit flies, so don't get too excited. The study's authors suggested a link between sleep deprivation and diseases of the digestive system, which could absolutely contribute to someone's mortality. The only way to be sure that doesn't happen to you is simple. Go to sleep. Like, right now. I mean, seriously, what's stopping you?